All right, hey everyone, and welcome back to part three. <laughs> you look, I'm in elementary. I'm teaching elementary school now. Part three <laughs> of money talks, but can you keep up? So we're going to be talking about financial reporting today. In part one, we talked about budgeting and um, for nonprofits and social enterprises. Part two, we talked about financial strategies. And again, today in part three, we're going to be talking about financial reporting. So we're going to explore financial reporting requirements for nonprofits and social enterprises, including tax filing and regulatory compliance. This includes best practices for record keeping, financial statements, um, preparation, and other reporting obligations. I kind of like this because um, it has come up a lot lately, okay, with some of the funding sources that are out there and they're asking for more and more detailed things. Mm -hmm. So this is a really good topic. <laughs> so mm -hmm. if this is your first time catching us, my name is Tracy B. Allen. I am the owner of Impactors Management Group, where I help social impact businesses to design, build, and fund their social ventures so that they can live the lifestyles that they desire while impacting their communities. All right. And I'm Ty Boone. I'm owner of Ty Boone Enterprises. I work mainly with nonprofit organizations, helping them to move from startup and struggle to sustainability and success. Yeah. <laughs> but if you mess with these people's money, you're going to go to jail. <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag clank clank. <laughs> that was crazy. Like that was the first introduction to me for me to you. You're like clank clank. I was like, I like that. Because you know what? If you mess with these people's money, you gonna go to jail. And a Definitely. lot of that comes up with financial reporting, right? When and orange is not the new black. Orange is not the new black. Impact mm -hmm. is like we said black. last time. Impact is the new black. <laughs> orange is not the new black. Impact yeah. is the new black. And you want to get an orange really quickly mess with these people's money. <laughs> this is not your money, whether you're, you know, if you're, if you're a social enterprise and you're, you're saying that you have a social cause, you, your funding for that social cause is supposed to be dedicated to that social cause, right? right. You're a nonprofit organization. The funding for that is for that. And I think, and Tracy, you can speak to this. I think that in social enterprise businesses, people confuse it and they co-mingle a lot. Because they don't I understand. Talk about that a lot. I talk oh, about not tell people me. about that because you know. <laughs> yeah, I have to talk about when people want to be have social enterprises or people are social entrepreneurs. I like to tell them you have a for you. It's almost like you're running two businesses. Mm -hmm. You have a for profit business and you also have a non profit business. It's not non profit, but you're running. It should be ran like like a non profit. So that component of your business should have the same amount of transparency as your um, if, as if you were running a non profit. So you don't necessarily have to tell people how much you make in your for profit business, but the social component, whatever you're doing on the social component, should be transparent because if you're going to ask people to contribute, because we change the terminologies when we're dealing with social enterprises. So when you ask people for money as a nonprofit, you're asking them to give you a donation. The word donation is synonymous with nonprofits. When you are a social enterprise because you're a for-profit business and you're going to be asking for money, I changed that word and you're asking for a contribution. And then people, if they don't understand, they will ask you what that means, but mm -hmm. you don't ever say donation because donation means I'm going to get a tax document mm -hmm. at the end of the year. So you don't want to mm -hmm. confuse them. But yes, you cannot commingle those funds. If you're saying that you are going to take a percentage of what you make in your for-profit business and give it to your nonprofit and you need to have 70 separate accounting, sorry, for that per portion of the cause component or the nonprofit that you decided to align yourself with so we can see the transfer of funds and then we can see how the monies were spent on that portion of the business. So mm -hmm. let's say you are, give me something, Ty. Um, I, I sell shoes and I said I was going to give. Yes, that's a good one. So you sell shoes and your social cause is to provide shoes to people in um, circumstances where they need to buy shoes. So you can have a model which is called a buy one, give one model, right? A lot of companies, social enterprise businesses use that, comp, um, that, that model like Waverly Glasses. They use it. Tom's, they use that buy one, give one model. So 
if you say that you're going to every time somebody buys a pair of shoes from you you're going to give away a pair of shoes we need to see that this purchase was made over here and that that purchase tra um, transacted into that giving mo model so if you're telling me that in your for-profit business you sold a hundred pairs of shoes in 2022 then i should see a hundred pair of shoes being given to people in the community and you should have record keeping that's one of the things we talked about here that we're going to discuss is records of how that transacted so what was that those shoes given to uh 50 girls and 50 boys or was it 60 girls and 40 boys what age range were they you know you have to keep good records because when then you go to do your taxes, you're gonna have to account for that, right? So just making sure that you're keeping good accounting records. And if you're not good with record keeping, you need to hire somebody mm -hmm. to do it. Because this is not a joke. You really need to keep good records. Mm -hmm. And stop being stingy. Hire people who, you know, if that's not your who thing. Who knows what they're doing. <laughs> hire somebody whose thing it is, right? Yeah. Well, I think the other week, Tracy, we talked we were talking with somebody and I can't remember what it was about, but I know they were saying, you know, and we were trying to to help them and they were saying hey i, I uh, we paid for something and we don't have a record of you remember this conversation we had with somebody and they were saying they were paying salary or somebody was paying salary from a their oh, business. yes yeah and, and, and we were trying to get them together like okay if this yeah. is a donation from or if this is a contribution from uh -huh. this business it needs to go to this nonprofit if it's a nonprofit yeah. pay, and then it needs to come out mm -hmm. A lot of people don't know that. And you have folk, you know, especially in the nonprofit world who are, you know, they, they say, well, I pay for this out of my pocket. And I'm like, well, what do you mean? What do you mean you pay for it out of your pocket? Well, I use my right. whatever. Did you first deposit this into your nonprofit account? Did you give it to your nonprofit and then pay out, pay it out as an expense? Oh no, we didn't do that. <laughs> <laughs> no. Yeah, I remember that case clearly. And I had to tell the person, there is nothing you can do to rectify that situation right now mm -hmm. because she did not have any paper trails from her for profit to the nonprofit mm -hmm. um, to signify that her for profit was acting in the capacity of a social enterprise. Mm -hmm. um, she had no paper trail. So the reporting and the record keeping is extremely important because if you don't have it, then you could say whatever you want, but it's just not there. <laughs> not there right? We don't know because you wouldn't get yeah. it. If it's not exactly. documented, it didn't happen, right? Mm -hmm. So how do you how do you account for that in accounting? Yeah, what is that? And when you're, you know, even things like and I don't know if we're gonna talk about this or not, you know, your income statements, your yeah, I, we, that's part of it. Yep. Yeah. Income statements, profit and loss. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I mean, and, and people are not, just not tracking. Oh, the income statements. Um, That is something I've been noticing that people have no idea what that is. Um, Because there have been a few grants lately that have asked for income statements. Mm -hmm. um, actually, I've been doing, it's not even grants. It's more um, certification, right? Mm -hmm. So minority business owner certification, you know, disadvantaged business owner. And they asked for that. And, you mm -hmm. know, my clients are like, what? What is that? What is what that? Well, you know, I, and I mean, granted, you don't know what you don't know, but that is something that you should know as a business owner. So I have been doing a lot of um, teaching on that that particular subject, like, you know, making sure you always have your profit and loss. You know, we, we even talked about that, not keeping up with it sometimes. <laughs> oh, 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 Tracy, I forgot. And I let that one slide. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Not even keeping up with it sometimes, but you have to know how to do it so that even if you're not keeping up with it and you you need to pull it together for something, you know exactly how to go about doing that um, effectively and efficiently. This one you could use to help you with it if you're you know on a smaller scale. But if you don't know what you're doing, mm -hmm. hire somebody to help you with this stuff. You know, yeah. you know things like audits. You know, I run into that a lot with grants yes. and folk are like, well, can we work around? These people don't know you. They don't want you to work around. <laughs> If you if they ask you for an audit of finance, you need to produce an audit of finance. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Not something you looked at yourself because you don't know what you're looking at. <laughs> and yeah. so, you know, um, but a, a lot of that kind of has things, you know, 990s for your nonprofit, if you're going to do uh -huh. um, that kind of thing, making sure that someone is doing them correctly, that you're, um, 
you know, not doing that postcard if you're trying to get grants, not doing the 990N if you're trying to get grants, but having someone who you could work with to help you with those. You know, finding I mean, your taxes as a social enterprise, you know, whether it's on a Schedule C or you're filing as an S Corp or you have already incorporated as a C Corp, whichever component it is, just making sure that you're filing your taxes, keeping up with your stuff, um, paying your taxes. <laughs> I've had many clients who have owed like $50,000 in taxes and they can't figure out how to pay it off. And, you know, so you don't want to get yourself into that type of situation. So just making sure you're keeping good financial reports will save your life and your business. Yep. And don't yeah. wait until, you know, uh -huh. Until everything gets to be chaotic and you're like, oh, now I'm in trouble. Now I got to go. Now I got to go do this. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Schedule these things because there's exactly. a for everything that something is do. <laughs> yeah. So as usual, if you have any other questions, anything that we can clear up for you, drop your link, drop your comments in the um, comment section and we will be sure to answer it for you. So until next time, guys, bye. Stay tuned for part four of the series. This is the final part. It's going to be called financial planning and forecasting because, yeah, <laughs> you need it. <laughs> okay. Bye, everyone.